Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. I mentioned in the previous episode that I was thrilled to see the new trailer for prehistoric planet Ice Age, as I'm sure many paleo nerds were. I was particularly impressed with the variety of locations and species that were shown off, with highlights being Gigantopithecus, Apiornis, and the Pleistocene Australian Megafauna. However, there was one animal that initially left me and other internet users scratching our heads. In one short clip, we're shown a tropical semi-arid savanna scene that looks as if it takes place in East Africa. Two long-bodied carnivorans enter the frame. With short blunt faces, slender builds, and sandy coloured coats, these animals initially struck me as being a bit uncanny looking. I assumed that they must have been some kind of mustelid. Although as one squares up to a saber-toothed cat, and it's revealed just how big this thing was, I didn't quite know what I was looking at. I was aware that there were quite a few species of very large mustelids that existed from the Miocene to the Pleistocene, but I didn't think any of them were lion-sized. <laughs> well, I was wrong. It's since been pointed out that these animals are most likely supposed to be Enhydriodon, a genus of giant otter that was native to Africa and the Indian subcontinent between the late Miocene and the early Pleistocene. There have been many species of large otter since the family Lutrinae diverged from other mustelids during the Middle Miocene. These included the East Asian Siamogale, a wolf-sized genus that measured up to 2 meters or 6 feet 6 inches long and weighed about 50 kilograms, as well as Megalenhydris, which was of an overall similar or perhaps even greater size and was endemic to what are now the Mediterranean islands of Sardinia and Corsica during the late Pleistocene. Today, only two species of giant lutrine remain, with these being the formidable Amazonian giant otter, which can reach almost 2 meters in length and weights of 32 kilograms or 71 pounds, and the adorable sea otter, which is the heaviest living mustelid, with large adults reaching 45 kilograms or 99 pounds, comparable to a grey wolf. I honestly had no idea that these ridiculously cute marine mammals were so big. However, some species of Enhydriodon were capable of reaching far greater sizes. This distinctive and clearly successful otter genus was not only widespread, ranging from India to South Africa, but was also long-lived and species-rich, spanning from circa 10 to 1.8 million years ago, and potentially producing at least 9 species. While represented by pretty scrappy remains, Enhydriodon possessed a number of very distinctive anatomical traits. Most noticeable were their large, heavily built skulls, which were equipped with short, blunt snouts and massive bunodont molar and premolar teeth that were well adapted for crushing. This was in contrast to the majority of modern otter species, which have shearing carnassial teeth built for slicing through flesh. The one major exception to this are the aforementioned sea otters of the genus Enhydra, which used their specialised bunodont molars for crushing marine benthic invertebrates, such as sea urchins, sea cucumbers, as well as clams and mussels. Unsurprisingly, sea otters are the closest living relatives of Enhydriodon, with it currently being thought that the genus originated in southern Asia, where the smallest and oldest representatives have been found. These include the Pliocene E. Sivalensis from what is now India, which seems to have been similar in size and diet to living sea otters although perhaps inhabiting freshwater ecosystems. However, the African forms tended to be significantly larger, although due to the fragmentary nature of their remains, it's difficult to tell exactly how many species there were, or how massive they may have been. One notable species was described in 2011, and named Enhydriodon dikikai, which was found in Middle Pliocene age deposits in East Africa, specifically Dikika in Ethiopia. What little that we do know of Enhydriodon comes from a few isolated fossils of a snout, lower jaw, the back of a skull, humerus, and fragments of a femur. Although this doesn't sound like much, and in reality it isn't, what makes these remains special is their sheer size. E. dikikai has been estimated to have weighed between 100 and 200 kilograms, or up to 440 pounds which is comparable to modern lions or American black bears. In 2022, an even bigger species was described on the basis of teeth and a femur found in the lower Omo Valley of southwestern Ethiopia. Dubbed E. omoensis, this pliopleistocene giant otter prowled around the open savanna woodlands of the region between 3.4 and 2.5 million years ago with further fragments that probably belong to this species hailing from younger early Pleistocene deposits circa 1.8 million years ago. 
This massive mustelid may have weighed more than 200 kilograms or 440 pounds, making it by far the largest member of this family so far known. While it was traditionally assumed that all Enhydriodon species were semi-aquatic foragers that fed on bivalves, catfish, young crocodilians, eggs and carrion, stable oxygen and carbon isotope analyses have found that Enhydriodon from the lower Omo Valley could have been terrestrial and fed on both aquatic and land-based prey acquired by either hunting or scavenging. This wide selection of prey items tracks well with the living Amazonian giant otter, which are highly opportunistic carnivores. Although E. omoensis would have been a far more terrestrial animal, capable of hunting grazing ungulates by ambush, its bunodont molars would have been able to crush bone, allowing the animal to scavenge from carcasses as hyenas do. It may have lurked in swampy conditions or in areas close to rivers, ambushing prey that wandered too close when they came down to drink, like some kind of furry mammalian crocodile. It's also been suggested that E. omoensis may have lived somewhat like an enormous version of the modern American mink, living in or close to water but regularly hunting on land. The youngest pair of Enhydriodon species, Dikikai and omoensis, are also interesting in that both lived alongside Australopithecines in East Africa, with these giant mustelids being more than capable of hunting our early ancestors, which is a pretty surreal thought given that its closest living relative is the adorable sea otter. The older Dikikai was native to the Hadar formation of Ethiopia, which was then a semi-arid savanna ecosystem that was home to a bizarre mixture of Pliocene animals, some of which would be instantly recognisable to us today, such as giraffes, hippos, gazelles and hyenas as well as completely extinct forms such as the huge proboscidean Dinotherium, the saber-toothed cats Homotherium and Dinophilus, the robust giraffe relative Shivatherium, and tropical mammoths. The younger Omoensis was found in the Shungura formation, living alongside notable animals such as Paleoloxodon reki, a large elephantid that could potentially weigh up to 15 tons, the strange browsing Calicothere and Silotherium, the huge baboon relative Dinopithecus, as well as the hominins Australopithecus and Paranthropus. Enhydriodon went extinct in Africa around the Pleistocene transition circa 1.8 million years ago, along with other large-sized ecologically specialised carnivorans, in addition to many browsing adapted herbivores. This extinction event could be linked to the many geological, climate and biotic changes occurring in the East African Rift Valley during the period notably the incursion of early members of the genus Homo into the carnivore guild. Although there are no giant carnivorous, somewhat terrestrial otters alive today, at least we'll get to see them and their familiar yet strange ecosystems recreated in prehistoric planet. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering another group of Pleistocene animals, with these being the iconic Australian Dromornithids, large flightless relatives of living screamers. See you again soon. Cheerio.